Hey everybody, it's our new normal. We're kind of learning long distance. Uh, pretend that you're sitting down at your, at your desk. We just uh, got out our notes and what we're doing today is we're talking about our fish of the day. Today's fish of the day, bottom fish. Fish that live down at the bottom. Now, these bottom fish, the reason why they live at the bottom, they have really big bones. Remember, specific gravity of bone is 2.0. That means as they have really big bones, they sink down to the bottom. That's what these things have, and that's where they live, is down at the bottom. Uh, i got a couple examples from bottom fish today. What I want you to pay attention to is how is each one physically different, uh, and a story about each one that makes them kind of special. Uh, my first bottom fish, rock cod. Rock cod, you're right, they live down by rocks. Uh, what makes a rock cod different from any other fish? Well, rock cod, uh, one thing that they have, they have venomous spines. Write it down in your notes. They have venomous spines. They have these hollow bones that go along their back. And these hollow bones, again, bones are heavy. It's going to weigh them down all the way down to the bottom. These bones are hollow. And in the middle of the bones, there's a poison. I'm trying to turn on my iPad here. Here we go. I got some pictures of some bottom fish, uh, some rock cod. Look at that. Uh, check out the color. I wonder why they're colored that way. Uh, right here, here's the poisonous spines. You're right. Because they're colored bright, that means they're poisonous. They got poisonous spines on their back. They're going to tell everybody, don't even try to eat me. I'm poisonous. These rock cod, what they do is they live down by a rock. They just sit there. They wait for something to swim by. And when something swims by, they have a really big mouth. And they just go like this. And when it does that, so much water goes towards their mouth, their prey starts coming into them. And then they just swim a little bit, and they eat it, and then they go back to the rock. Now, these things, they don't have to worry about being eaten because they got poisonous spines. Because of that, they can live for a super long time. Like, there's this one, it's called the copper rock cod. It can live for 55 years. <laughs> there's this one, it's called the yellow eye. The yellow eye, it does. It has a ring of yellow around its eye. It could live for 105 years. Oh, that's nothing compared to the rough eye. The rough eye rock cod, uh, they found one. And how old was it? Well, first of all, let's go back to fish. And how can you tell how old it is? One thing that you could do is you could pull off a scale. And just like a tree or just like a mollusk bivalve, there's rings on it that tell how old it is. That's one way you could tell. But there's a more precise way. You dissect the fish, and in the fish's head, by their uh, back, uh, by their head, is there's this bone called the Olaf bone. And when you burn the Olaf bone, it exposes these rings, and each ring is how old it was. Back to the rough eye. There was this rough eye. They found its Olaf bone. They counted how old it was. Two hundred and five years old. Oh man! Uh, not only can they live for a long time. Uh, they uh, don't reach sexual maturity for a while. Like the yellow eye, it can't have babies until it's 10 years old. <laughs> when they have babies, they're ovo, ovoviparous. Yeah, write it down in your notes. <laughs> they're ovo, ovoviparous. Now use your brain. We saw that term the other day. What does it mean? Oh, it means that babies are inside the mom, but there's no umbilical cord to it, going to it. We talked about the great white shark. Now, the advantage of this is that the baby's going to be safe and you don't have to feed your babies. Well, if the babies are inside a mom, you can't have a lot of babies at a time. So they only have about four babies at a time. And then... They come out of mom. All right, so what I want you to know about the uh, the rock cod. They have venomous spines. They live for a super long time. And they can have babies for a while. Also, that they're ovo-ovoviparous. Now the story. There's a redneck. And his dad, well, he was from Butte, Montana. And he wanted to raise redneck kids. That's where, uh, that's where I was born. And then my dad got a job in Seattle. 
So we moved, and you can't live in Seattle if you're a redneck. So we got a place way out in Issaquah. Not in downtown Issaquah, out in the sticks. Yeah, that'd be a good place to let raise rednecks. Now, how is Pa going to teach us how to be rednecks? Well, uh, you go fishing, and, well, in the winter, you do other things. Well, so in the summer, we were going fishing. Now, a rule about being a redneck is that if you go fishing, you can't come home until you catch a fish. So we go out in the Puget Sound, and we go out salmon fishing. Sometimes we just couldn't find the salmon. God, what are we going to do? We can't come home to mom. Mom's expecting some fish. Pop, he was a smart redneck. He said, don't worry, kids. Let's go. Let's go get some rock cod. See, he knew a place over by Everett where there's uh, some, a submerged rock pile. It's about 80 feet of water. Well, if there's rocks, there's going to be rock cod there. So we go right over that rock pile. We put down our bait right by those rocks. And then the fish would just come out, get it, and we'd bring home some fish to mom, having fish and chips. Well, you know, we weren't the only rednecks out there. There was other rednecks. And this was kind of before we understood what sustainable fishing is. See, what we were doing is we were catching them when they were four years old. Now, they were a big fish at four years old. But if they haven't had babies and they don't make babies until they're 10 years old, that means you kill them before they make babies to replace themselves. So what happened is the rock cod population in the Puget Sound going down, 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 down. Finally, the wildlife biologists realized that. And then they stopped rock cod fishing. And, and because they only have four babies at a time, it's taken a while for the rock cod population to come back up. So what I want you to write down in your notes is that the rock cod were overfished back in the 1980s. They were being caught and killed before they had a chance to make babies. All right, that's our rock cod notes. Next one. Ah, this one right here, the Pacific cod. I want you to know how they're physically different. How are they physically different? Well, they have a... They have, a, they, have a, they have a thing underneath its chin. I mean, it has a little diddly doob underneath its chin. No, let's call it a barb. They have a barb underneath their chin. It's just like a little whisker. It's called the Pacific Cod if it's in the Pacific Ocean. It's called the Atlantic Cod if it's the Atlantic Ocean. Come on, iPad. Come back to life. Uh, so here we go. Uh, we got our Pacific Cod right here. Oh, focus, focus, focus. I think I may see. Come on, baby. Oh, it just went away. Oh, I don't know if I can see it. Yeah, it has a little barb underneath its chin right there. That's how they're physically different. Uh, next, I want you to write down how they have their babies. They're just oviparous. They just lay eggs. Brothers and sisters, do they ever lay eggs? They lay 5 million eggs at a time. <laughs> Talk about sustainable fishing. If they lay 5 million eggs, they have 5 million babies. That means there's a whole bunch of Atlantic cod and Pacific cod out there. And we do commercially harvest these at an enormous rate. But it's a sustainable fishing because there's a, they're making babies to replace themselves that left. All right. No, I don't want you to know that. Uh, what I want you to know, let's see, I want you to know they're oviparous. They lay a whole bunch of eggs. They have a barb underneath their chin. Now, you know, I like to eat crab. I was at the grocery store today. I had my face mask on. Uh, I went over and I, they, I, the crab was caught. It's, it's $19.99 a pound. And crab's about four pounds. That's like $80. I just can't afford it. But I really was thinking about eating crab. And then I went up to the deli mark, and there they had imitation crab. They had fake crab. Ah, oh, fake crab. It looks like crab. It tastes like crab. What imitation crab is, is that they take Pacific cod, and they cut the Pacific cod's mu muscle. They flay it out. Then they soak it in water, filled up with some salt, some gun onion powder, some, some uh, garlic powder, and they leave it there for about seven days. And after seven days... It changes its texture, and it tastes like crab. It's imitation crab. It's fake crab. <laughs> it's not too sexy of a name. Uh, you're not going to sell it as 
imitation crab. You're not going to sell it as fake crab. What is imitation or fake crab sold as in the store? Think about it. Think about it. I got the answer. It's crab with a K. Crab with a K is imitation crab. It's fake crab. It's pollock that has been marinated in salt water, garlic powder, and onion powder. And it changes its texture, it changes its taste, and it tastes just like crab. It's crab with a K. And since we catch so much Pacific cod, it's sold for $3.99 a pound. Oh, that's a lot cheaper than a real crab. No. The secret ingredient in a crabby patty? What is it? Yes, it's crab with a K. Going on to my next one. Next, oh, and I want you to know that story. The imitation crab, fake crab, is crab with a K, and it's Pacific cod. Next one, ling cod. How is ling cod physically different than any other bottom fish? What it has is a dorsal fin that goes the length of its back. It has a dorsal fin that goes the length of its back. Remember, the first fin on the back of a fish is the dorsal fin. And just like the sand lance, the greenling or the lang cod has a dorsal fin that goes the length of its back. They're old vipers, write that down, they're old vipers, they lay eggs. I want you to know a story about how they lay their eggs. They lay their eggs in the winter, write it down. I might be going too fast. Next. The males sit over the eggs and they guard the eggs. If anything comes by those eggs, the male's going to chase it away and take a bite out of it. Octopus comes by. It's going to take a bite out of it. Shark comes by. It's going to chase the shark away. All right. Now, if we were in class, we have a Tootsie Pop question of the day right now. I would give you a question. What are two rules that you could pass that would mean that you could catch ling cod, but catch it in a sustainable way. One rule that you're going to write down is that you don't catch them in the winter. Because the males are going to be sitting over the eggs. So if you just pull the males off the eggs, something's going to eat the eggs. The next thing is, is that you're going to uh, wait until they've had a chance to make their eggs. You see, I just hesitated. I paused because I forgot to tell you some information. I was going to tell you that a male, the male can have babies when they're th uh, three years old. And a male at three years old is 26 inches. The females, they can't have babies until they're five years old. And a female at five years old is 30 inches big. So to catch something at a sustainable way means it's had a chance to make babies at least once. So what's another rule that you could have? Yeah, you're right. Make sure that they've, uh, they've had a chance to make their baby. So how are you going to do that? How about this? Can't catch them until they're 34 inches big. If there's 34 inches big, it doesn't matter if it's a male or female. It's had a chance to make babies at least once. Perfect. I got a minute left. I got to go fast. My next one is halibut. Halibut are flat fish. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop this and then we're going to finish up with another video.